Welcome back to the episode 9 of the Daniel Smith Colour Showdown, which is the penultimate episode for the season 1 of Daniel Smith's Colour Showdown. If you would like to see season 2 happen very soon, then please head on over to Patreon, as doing the season 2 of the Daniel Smith's Colour Showdown is one of my Patreon goals. Having it as a Patreon goal basically means that I will be able to afford to test out whatever colour you actually request. At the moment, I can only do colours that I do have or that I can afford. And I know there are some Daniel Smith colours that are so expensive, it makes us all really weary of buying it and trying it. But with your support over on Patreon, I will be able to do that for you and thoroughly test it for you for season two. And of course, please don't worry if you can't afford to do Patreon. I totally understand. It's definitely not a compulsory thing. It's just if you'd like to support this channel and you can help us out, then that will be amazing. But you watching this video alone just helps this channel grow so much. So on to today's episode. Today we are going to compare the Daniel Smith Green Gold with the Daniel Smith Rich Green Gold. They are, like many we've covered in this series, two colours that are right next to each other in the colour chart. They are also both series two, so when deciding between these two, the price doesn't really come into it much. The one big difference, besides the very noticeable hue difference, is that green gold is made out of three pigments, whereas rich green gold is made out of one. So if single pigments are something that you're concerned about, then there is a big difference. They are both lovely, lovely colours. I used to have green gold on my palette and then I took it out because I didn't know what to do with it. But hopefully we will learn a lot more about these two colours in this episode. So let's take a closer look at each of these colours and then we'll come back and compare the two. First up is Green Gold and it is made from PY150 which is your Nickel Azo Yellow and then PY3 which is your Aralide Yellow 10G which is your basic Hansa Yellow Light as well as PG36 which is your Chlorobrominated copper thalo cyanine, which is your thalo green yellow shade. Jackson says on their website that green gold is a green shade with bright yellow undertones and golden highlights. This product, if used in concentrated form, has a rich and transparent olive green tone. It is classified as very good in light fastness, which is one down from excellent transparent, non-granulating and medium staining. On to the rich green gold next and it is made out of a single pigment which is your PY129, a azomethane copper complex. As with the green gold it is a series 2 colour and Jackson website says rich green gold is a warm mossy green. This product is an effective choice when depicting fruits, vegetables, leaves and landscapes, so quite versatile. Low staining and light fast, rich green gold lifts with ease from either a concentrated or diluted wash and from either damp or dry work. It is classified as excellent in light fastness, semi-transparent, non-granulating and low staining. We are back and the paints have dried. This side is green gold and this side is the rich green gold. First impression, the green gold is a much brighter green. I would say like a springy kind of green between the two, whereas the rich green gold is more of like an autumnal colour. There are a couple of surprises that I wasn't expecting to happen. So let's take a closer look at both of them side by side. For the washes, the green gold, I think, is a little bit smoother to do a gradated wash than the rich green gold. However, the rich green gold does have more intensity in that you get a darker mass tone than the green gold. In terms of 
all the other papers. This is hot press paper, this is rough and this is Archer's cold press. Both of them do wash really nicely. There is some cauliflowering here and here and here. So I think they are slightly prone to cauliflowering but not entirely because there are few that washed fine. In terms of the opacity, the green gold is slightly more transparent than the rich green gold. I can see a very subtle deposit on the black line. So I would say that I agree with the Daniel Smith classification that this is semi-transparent and this is transparent. Interestingly, with the lifting, I have to say green gold is the hardest colour I've tried to lift in this series. It was surprisingly staining. I had a good go at this. Normally I do two brushes with a wet clean brush, dab it, and I repeat that four times. However, I did way more than that and I still couldn't get much lifting happening. So even though Daniel Smith classified this colour as mid staining, I would say it is quite high staining colour. In contrast, the rich green gold just lifted so easily. As soon as I put a line of clean water here, the colour changed, which is like a super good sign that this is going to lift really easily. In terms of glazing, I do think that the green gold layers better because it's such a staining colour. With the rich green gold, you see some unevenness in the second glazing and that's because it's so easily lifted and as soon as you touch it with a wet brush some of the first layer is going to come up so if you do do lots of layering then the green gold is better than the rich green gold in terms of gauzing this is green gold and this is rich green gold i was really surprised that the green gold produced linear patterns this colour has nickel azo yellow, Hansa yellow light and thalo green yellow shade. I know that the azo yellow and the thalo green doesn't granulate, so I'm kind of throwing a guess that it could be the Hansa yellow light. It's definitely worth testing Hansa yellow light for gauzing at a later date. It's slightly confusing me at the moment because you know, we've come up with a main theory that it's granulating colours that produce linear results on gauze. And I wouldn't really say that the green gold is a granulating colour. But I do promise to investigate more into the Hansa Yellow Light to see if that's what's causing it. Or trying to test these three different pigments on their own to try to figure out what's creating the lines. I do like the colour of this gauzing. It kind of reminds me of a matcha ice cream. It's not quite matcha because that is very, very deep green. But matcha ice cream, that is a good colour form. In contrast, the rich green gold doesn't produce any linear patterns. And in fact, it doesn't really produce that prettier pattern. Onto the salt with the green gold, it doesn't really do much. You can see where the salt landed, but that's about it. It is a nice way to create texture though. In contrast, it's basically the opposite to the gauzing. The rich green gold went bonkers on the salt and produced very beautiful results. This half, the left half is just table salt and this half, the right half, is with more crystallized rock salt. And you can see that the table salt worked really well in this. On to the water blooming. They're okay. Nothing special, nothing great to write home about. I think the rich green gold bloomed a little bit more. And that could be an interesting effect somewhere. I wouldn't bother doing the water blooms with the green gold. On to how the two colours mix with other colours now. This side is green gold and this side is rich green gold. I wouldn't necessarily call either of these a mixing colour. One thing to note that I noticed when doing the colour mixes was that because the green gold has such weak tinting strength, 
it you only need a teeny tiny bit of the other color so I don't know how effective green gold will be to mix with other colors on the other hand the rich green gold has slightly higher tinting strengths but not by much either so I wouldn't use these colors to really mix darker mixes because you just won't see the difference in those colors being in the mix the two color mixes really well with the yellows and the greens obviously now i do particularly like the orange that is produced by mixing the scarlet lake with the rich green gold in conclusion what do i think of these two colors well i don't think either of them are going to make it onto my main palette I haven't seen amazing tricks on this to warrant either one of these colors to go onto my palette. However, if I had to pick between these two, for me personally, liking the bright colors, then I would go for the green gold rather than the rich green gold. It's also really interesting that it can do gauzing. And I actually, even though it doesn't react that much with salt, do like the texture that the salting creates. However, if you're looking for a more autumnal palette or the richer, deeper colors, then I would suggest the rich green gold. And as Jackson says, this is a far more versatile color if you're painting anything in nature. It also has a higher tinting strength than the green gold, which makes it a little bit more versatile in color mixes than the green gold is. I think green gold really is just there to look pretty on its own. So which one would you pick? Would you pick the green gold or the rich green gold or both or neither? Do let us know in the comments down below. Also, if you have one or both of these colors on your palette, then please let us know how you use these colors because that information has been so valuable in this series to learn from other artists to specific examples of where and how to use these colors as i said this is a penultimate episode of the dino smith color showdown if you don't want to miss out on the final episode of this season then Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon button so that you get notified when it comes out. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate your support and I will see you in the next video.